If you're new to Dreams, the fantastic game engine on PlayStation 4 and 5, well, <laughs> this video is for you. And actually, if you watch this video around the time that I'm going to upload it, which is of course August 2023, well, right now you can get Dreams for free on PlayStation Plus if you're subscribed. If you haven't got the game already, well, <laughs> definitely do, of course. Today I'll go over a lot of beginner stuff, how to get started creating specifically. I might also still make a video about how to get started playing, you know, my constant recommendations, but for this video I'll keep it to create. Because of course, I'm a dreams creator, have been for 4 years, and I've made, well... What I'm trying to say is, I have experience. This is how to get into dreams. First of all, please don't get dismayed by the intro of the game, it's all a bunch of fluff, but you have to go through it to get to the good stuff. Just be sure to use the gyroscope control scheme, it's objectively better, it gives you essentially the full precision and control that a mouse has on PC, but on controller. I know it's weird at first, but 100% trust me on this one, you need that control scheme. Now the whole beginning of dreams is overwhelming and kind of messy, let me just be clear real quick when you'll be done. After the initial tutorial, you choose Dream Shaping or Dream Surfing. You'll need to have clicked on both to get to your own home space. No need to play or create anything yet. Once you have this empty home space, play the Set the Scene and Break the Elements imp quest tutorial. That should only take you a few minutes. Important to realize is that when you are new to Dreams, the UI will be different than once you get some experience. When I enter Dream Shaping, I see my creations immediately, where at first you will have to scroll past some tutorials and templates to get to your creations. You can also just go to your profile, which displays your creations exclusively right from the beginning, as long as you did that imp quest tutorial and perhaps created a second scene. I definitely recommend doing the basic tutorials. You're gonna need to know how to do stuff like scope into groups, select things and tweak tweak menus. Okay, that's all the boring stuff out of the way, let's now open up a new level and really make you feel the depression and anxiety wash over you as you understand slowly that, well, you have no idea what you want to make. That's how real we're gonna get here. Chances are really high you won't know what to make and even less how to make it. Most dreamers will tell you to keep things simple, but not how to do that. Well, as I said in my last video, easiest to do is to try to replicate something, something you're really passionate about. Replication is frowned upon often in dreams for good reason, we don't want to break copyright law, but it's the best way to learn because you can't cheat quality. You know what the end result should be, and so you're not gonna stop early the moment you don't know how to do something. I learned sculpting and my first bit of dreams logic from recreating the Cyberpunk 2077 apartment from the first trailers. I learned my first bit of music from recreating a song from The Last Guardian and the Death Stranding theme. Just believe me, making something original right from the get-go will be very difficult. This also counts in general for dreams. Dreams consist of multiple disciplines, 3D modeling, logic, animation and sound. Don't make the mistake of wanting to make everything from scratch. Take from the community those things that you don't find fun to make or those disciplines you're not familiar enough with yet. I myself am not a big fan of sculpting for example and so even my most visually distinct games are essentially 100% community or media molecule assets. To make your game still stand out, you can edit other people's assets, change their surface properties, give them a different paint job, combine assets into something new. Same comes for music, you can change instruments, remove them altogether, change the speed and you'll get something unique that you also don't have to make from scratch. I guarantee you, most high level dreamers and even the best games in dreams rely heavily on community creations. In fact, that is in part why devs in dreams can create such ambitious games in such short time spans. A bit more specific tips now. If you're interested in starting with art but still want a gameplay component, you can drop Media Molecules FPS template into your scene. This is by default just a first person character that allows you to walk through your scene or even platform a bit. If you want to make a shooter specifically, definitely don't use Media Molecules template and use mine instead. It's way better and funnily enough way easier to customize despite being 100 times as complex. You can of course also just scour the Dreamiverse for characters to stem down and play with. Again, I can't understate the importance of a clear goal. Recently I made a video about the Just Cause games making the point that those games need more structure to force creativity to happen. Dreams is almost as far as you can go with removing structure. It's very hard to be creative when you don't have anything to fail or succeed at. You need to get beyond that empty scene and aimlessly browsing stuff as quickly as possible. Afterwards, I guarantee you'll be hooked. So far I've skipped a lot of the technicals of dreams, but I think it's a good idea to give you a quick crash course in, well, just stuff you'll be seeing a lot while creating. In dreams there are three types of files you can create and release. An element, a scene and a dream. An element is an asset essentially, whether a piece of logic, a 3D model, a sound effect or a song. 
When you're in create mode looking for stuff to put in your game, you're looking for elements. Scenes are essentially levels. This is where you're dropping elements into and where you'll be creating your player experience. Dreams are nothing more than a final package. You can connect all your levels together to create a campaign or just add a single scene. Release a dream and people will be able to play it in dream serving and you'll get a chance to be features on the front page. In create mode itself, you'll probably want to add some 3D models to whatever you're making. There are two layers to assets. One is where you're sculpting. Here you'll fundamentally add the shapes and colors that make up the thing. But two is the tweak menu of an asset, pressing L1 and square on it. Here you can override the sculpted color or make it physical for example, allowing it to fall or bounce around. This immediately brings me to optimization. Sounds complex, but is essential to understand and fairly simple to not mess up once you get it. Dreams has two important thermometers, gameplay and graphics. These show you how much you can put in a scene before PS4 runs out of memory essentially. The graphics portion is about quality, how detailed are the assets in your game. The gameplay portion is about quantity, how many things are in your game. Important to understand is that graphics thermo doesn't multiply when you have multiple of the same asset in the scene, so you can have the most detailed asset in the entire world and you'll still be able to clone it 18,000 times just like any other one. There's just one catch and that is that if you edit an asset, it will count as a new one, which will in fact double the thermo for that specific object then. So you want to avoid editing the same asset to create variation unless necessary. And this brings me back to the tweak menu. Tweaking an asset doesn't make it count as a new asset. And so if you want color variation for example, you can just tweak them. Graphics optimization itself is very simple as well. In the tools menu you'll find a tool called adjust detail. With this you can make an object either more or less detailed. Keep in mind that even though a low detailed object looks the same as a high detailed one set to higher looseness in its tweak menu, only the actual lower detail one takes up less space. So a practical example real quick, imagine you want to make a skyscraper. A first day dreamer will make the entire thing one sculpt, taking up a mad graphics thermo in the process, since you need a ton of detail to make a sculpt that large look sharp in gameplay. That's bad. But they learn, right? To save graphics, the second day dreamer will create one low thermo window and just copy it 400 times. But this is also bad because now you're taking up precious gameplay thermo, which is much harder to optimize away since it requires deleting dozens if not hundreds of things to see a small drop. This is why experienced dreamers are able to make much larger games than beginners, because a professional dreamer understands when to optimize for which thermo. With the skyscraper example, they might just sculpt the front face of one floor and then clone that 40 times, which will put equal pressure on both thermos. Experienced dreamers are very smart with asset use in general, like for example they might make the skyscraper green and change the whole flag type and turn it into like a field of grass with no additional cost. And just quickly to be clear, using code mode, style mode or effects mode on a sculpt also doesn't make it count as a new asset, so use it as much as you like. That brings me to gameplay. You create gameplay in dreams using logic. I won't explain it all because there's just too much, but there's some stuff you can immediately get started with. The default dreams lighting is pretty bad, so you can stamp down a sun and sky gadget and tweak it. For more realistic lighting, make the sun white and on the second page you can turn horizon definition and flex shade randomness down. The distance fog that makes your scene look transparent is something that will haunt you at first, so let me help you immediately. On that second page you can push it backwards, as far as 50,000 meters, which completely gets rid of it pretty much. Mine usually is between 3 and 10,000. Also something you'll run into quickly is preview invisibility. By default this is turned on, making any assets set to be invisible or completely powered off invisible in create mode as well, which often confuses new players. You can find the tweak in the show hide tab, I recommend always having it turned off. Also an important function in the same bit of menu is x-ray mode. This allows you to see logic inside groups. Sometimes when you add something from the Dreamiverse it comes with a lighting gadget or something. X-ray mode will allow you to spot it easily. Getting started with logic is something I can't give too many tips on because I already kind of knew the logic from Little Big Planet. I will say though that reverse engineering logic in Dreams has helped me tremendously. I'd say find some media molecule created contraptions and just start messing with the logic and try to understand what happens. I don't really make tutorials on this YouTube channel anymore, I think talking general game design is much more productive and fun for everyone involved, but I might make a one-time exception for a logic crash course. Let me know if that would interest you. When it comes to music, you'll probably have the easiest time getting started, but only if you're comfortable making music already probably. It took me a while to understand how it worked, so I'll give you a quick rundown. Go to sound mode and stamp a music timeline down. This is different from a normal timeline, though it looks the same, keep that in mind. 
Next while in sound mode, go to search and then instruments. I recommend not bothering with most community sound effects or instruments because the amount of times it's from copyrighted work is crazy. Instead, use Media Molecule's instrument library, which is so good that if it were on a PC, it would probably cost quite a bit of money. Once you have picked an instrument, stamp it on the timeline and scope into it. On this first page, you can perform music by playing with a controller. Fun and all, but a very cumbersome and restrictive way to create a song. So instead, go to the second page with the music symbols. Then go to your sound mode tools and click draw notes. This allows you to draw the notes you want, even freeform if you hold L1. You can also clone them or edit them if you let go of the tool with circle. Now it's suddenly much easier to put down some chords and put a melody over it. As long as you know what you're doing of course. Again, replicating a song you like might be the best way to get started. One last thing I want to do this video is quickly look at an actual game made in dreams so you can kind of start to understand how things connect with each other. We'll be looking at the boss battle from my latest release game, Connie Chasing Dreams. The dream itself consists of four scenes, an intro, a parkour level, a boss battle and outro. Dreams has a door gadget that you can stamp down, activate it and you'll leave a level. The player character in this case has a pause menu with a quit option in it and you can see those lead back to the enter door of the intro. The boss level then, I made the lighting dark using a sun and sky gadget. I made sure the floor and ceiling weren't unnecessarily hard on graphics thermal by lowering their detail with the adjust detail tool. When you enter the level, I have a simple loop of humming playing as music, but I gave it a lot of reverb to create a dreamy vibe. I have a trigger zone in the middle of the scene detecting when the player is close. Once activated, it activates a counter counting to 1, meaning that it'll stay on unless reset. This counter then simultaneously turns off the player, turns on the cutscene character and starts a timeline with an animation and a bunch of cameras. Yes, the cutscene. Keyframes are possibly the most important gadget of dreams. You can animate anything with it. You can make assets or characters move of course, but you can also animate logic or even those properties of sculpts. Anything you can change, you can animate essentially. In this case they're purely a character animation. Let's continue. If you hold X and the cutscene is playing at the same time, a timer will count up to one second and then move the player to the end of the cutscene using a keyframe. This is a cutscene skip button. When the cutscene is over, I turn on the boss character and FPS player character. The FPS player character is, as always, a customized version of my own FPS template. In this game, I don't have sprint and aim down sights, for example, so those mechanics are turned off. Also, I turn on a music track. This is literally just a media molecule made one, but edited by me for more appropriate pacing. Once we turn preview invisibility off, you'll see a bunch of floating effects, really common in dreams. Remember the tweak menus? Well, you can tweak anything in create mode and power it off using the power button or logic. This stops logic from functioning or makes sculpts and groups completely non-existent in play mode. Whenever you spawn an object using an emitter, like an explosion effect when you shoot, the model you reference for that needs to exist physically in the scene. And so it will be automatically turned off because referencing a live asset is asking for bugs. So anytime you add a character to a scene and see a bunch of these floating effects, just know it's reference for an emitter. Well, that's it! Some quick basics to help you get started creating in dreams. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're interested in what I'm making, because uh, I have some cool stuff cooking. If you made it through this entire video while already being familiar with dreams, well, first of all, congratulations, you really didn't need to, but still, you know, you might as well go to the comments now and tell some people your tips and stuff that you learned while creating in dreams. As for me, well, thank you for watching. I'll see you around. And I'm, I really need some water, man. Like, holy, my, my voice is ruined. Do you know I'm recording this in the evening after a whole day of work? Bloody hell, man. Dude, I'm working so hard on dream stuff right now. You, <laughs> I mean, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see in the next video, dude. It's gonna be crazy. Oh my god, I need to, I need to go sleep or something. I'll have a party later. Oh, great.